Good morning. <clears throat> the first lesson is from Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Ancient words, ancient wisdom. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let us read <clears throat> uh, Psalm 12 uh, responsively. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on God's name, make known the deeds of the Lord among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let us be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The second lesson is from the fourth chapter of Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Ancient words, ancient wisdom. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you O Lord. Lord. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? He said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with great expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, 
but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with, men, with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> This week, my attention was drawn to a poem written by the poet Jack Gilbert. In his poem, A Defense for the Brief, Gilbert insists that we cultivate joy in the face of the world's brokenness. Gilbert writes this, we must risk delight. Oh, God is calling. My pastor. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> A quick note, if you do have your cell phone on, please turn it off. Thank you. Jack Gilbert in his poem, A Brief for the Defense, writes this, we must risk delight. We can do without pleasure, but not delight, not enjoyment. We must have the stubbornness to accept our gladness in the ruthless furnace of this world, to make injustice the only measure of our attention is to praise the devil. If the locomotive of the Lord runs us down, we should give thanks that the end had magnitude. We must admit there will be music despite everything. We must risk delight. The ancient authors of our scripture stories wholeheartedly agree. Even in the most desperate of times, there is delight. Even in the most desperate of times, there is music. Even in the most desperate of times, there is joy. The prophet Zephaniah calls readers to sing aloud Rejoice, exult with all their hearts because God is near and is rejoicing over them with gladness. The prophet Isaiah declares with confidence that the people will draw water from the wells of salvation with joy. And Paul, writing to the church in Philippi, encourages the people to rejoice with the Lord always. Indeed, on this third Sunday in the season of Advent, the mood is joy. The third Sunday in the season of Advent is conventionally known as Gaudete or Rejoice Sunday because it is a day that we anticipate and we celebrate delight. God's delight in us and our delight in God who loves us, who saves us. Even as we hear John's abrasive voice in the wilderness, even as we anticipate the significance of Jesus' once and future arrival, Today, today invites us to pause and to marinate in the heart of the gospel story, which is the stunning good news of God's saving love. Good news that is grounded in great joy. And 
And yet, is it fair to say that good news of great joy provokes some feelings of uneasiness? Perhaps some anxiety? Maybe even a little suspicion? Rejoicing isn't always easy, especially in these days and times when the concept of joy is routinely manipulated by advertisers, news networks, politicians, who want nothing more than our money, loyalties, and votes. If the biblical instruction is to receive God's great love with joy and to rejoice no matter the circumstances or the suffering around us, I find this a challenging invitation to accept. We are reeling from yet another school shooting. We are wondering what Omicron will do. We're struggling with what to do in the face of climate change. We see divisions all around us. Given all of this, risking joy feels a little foolish. And yet those biblical ancestors of ours speak of joy. Joy that does not come from a place of denial or obliviousness or frivolity. The prophet Zephaniah writes about joy from the context of terrible spiritual and political corruption perpetrated by the very leaders who are supposed to care for the most vulnerable and oppressed. Zephaniah's joy comes alongside his call to repentance and lament. And it is grounded firmly in the confidence that God will make things right. Likewise, the prophet Isaiah writes in the context of unspeakable suffering. God's people have been carted off by the Babylonians. They are in exile, torn away from their families. Isaiah's call to joy is forward-facing, a call that fully recognizes the horror of the present circumstances and expects that something good Something restorative is on the horizon. God will not abandon God's beloved people. Exile will not define reality forever. There will be a return, a homecoming, a celebration of restoration and renewal. And Paul? Paul is writing from a prison cell, chained, awaiting trial, and anticipating his death. And yet, Paul implores the church to rejoice. Paul is a person who has been threatened and rejected and beaten and shipwrecked, and he urges joy. Paul's most famous words to the Philippians are, not so much about making us feel good as they are about encouraging us to cultivate the inner life of the spirit, a spirit of joy and of peace, whatever the circumstances. Paul insists that joy and peace are not so much feelings that we conjure up on our own, but they come from God. And the only way that we access them is through consistent spiritual practices. 
prayer, supplication, gentleness, and contemplation. When I was a child, my parents often would give me those activity books. You know, the ones intended to entertain young kids with crosswords and connect the dots and fill in the blanks. You know what I'm talking about? But those weren't my favorite pages. My favorite were the pages that held ordinary things. An outdoor space or a bedroom scene in which other figures were cleverly hidden. How many animals can you find? The caption would read. And I would stare and stare and turn those pages over until I found every single last one of them. For me, this was a source of delight to confront the ordinary, ensure and certain confidence that it held something extraordinary. And as best as I can describe it, this is the impulse that drives faith with God. The impulse of stubborn persistence. Because even if we can't see what God is up to in the world, God is active and present and doing something extraordinary. It's our call to stubbornly pay attention for the joy God is already gifting us. When we look at our lives, when we look at the lives of our neighbors, the life of this faith community, the world around us, we are searching for that hidden image that hidden joy that speaks to God's delight in us and in all creation. Joy. Our ancient ancestors insist, requires that we hold on to two realities at once. The reality of a broken world in one hand and the reality of God's love in the other. Joy is birthed when we daily trust that God isn't waiting for us to have it all together or for the world to be resolved of its problems before God draws near. God does not wait to enter in. God is already entering into this world with great love. And our response is to gently and stubbornly live in that tension of now and not yet. Trusting that even in times of devastation, there is delight, there is music, there is joy. For this we can say, thanks be to God. You may have noticed that it's quite colorful in here. These quilts have been constructed by our beloved Sojourners group, who meets faithfully every Thursday at 1 p.m. These quilts are being, ready to, being made ready to be sent out into the world to provide warmth for those who are um, going to be newly housed. And so today we want to send them off with prayer. I invite you to, if you're not sitting on one, to at least put your hand on one, grab onto a thread, a string, and let us pray a blessing upon them. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth in thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. Renew us in the commitment to use our gifts in the service of others, especially of those in need. Let us be your hands to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, 
Comfort the weary and outcast. Welcome the stranger, care for creation, and be loving neighbors to all people. Oh God, bless these quilts. May those who receive them find dignity in their use and comfort in their warmth. And may these gifts be a sign of your love to all people. To you, O oh God, be glory and honor through your Son, Jesus, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in your church and in the world, now and forever. Amen. Coffee Hour continues this Tuesday at 9 a.m. on Zoom. This is a wonderful opportunity for our community to stay connected in this time. The Zoom link is posted to our website. Council meets this Tuesday, December 14th at 2 p.m. here in the fellowship space. The search for a communications coordinator continues. If you have something you need to communicate um, that needs to go into the e-news or needs to be on our website or anything of that nature, you can reach Stephen at communications, with an S, at njlc-fh.org. Midweek Advent worship continues this Wednesday, December 15th at 6.30 p.m. here in our worship space. I realize that it is quite dark at 6.30. If you would like to carpool, please see me and we will organize some of those details. Uh, masks are required. Blue Christmas is a special worship service that we are offering this year on December 21st at 6.30 p.m. For many people, the holidays are not always such a happy time. And so we gather to make space for the grief of the season and to cling to the hope we have in Jesus. Uh, please extend this invitation to neighbors uh, to whom you suspect or know that this season is difficult. Masks are required. Christmas Eve worship will be Friday, December 24th at 6.30 here in, the, here in our worship space. Weather permitting, we will gather outside to process into the church. Hear those words, weather permitting. There are many opportunities to serve here at New Journey, especially in worship. We are looking for, um, in particular, readers for these upcoming services, Blue Christmas and Christmas Eve, and stretching beyond Christmas to, to Sunday, December 26th for Lessons and Carols. Um, if this is something you feel drawn or led to, uh, please uh, see the sign-up sheets at the back. Uh, Additionally, we are looking for some help on a monthly basis to clean our space. Uh, in, in teams of two, we invite people to come here at least once a month to dust, pick up, make sure the trash is taken out, that sort of thing. Here's what you all have been waiting for. The Christmas angel tree tags are now available. If you are unfamiliar with this ministry, we partner with Imagine School in Mesa. Uh, to provide Christmas gifts for some families who uh, struggle financially. And so those Christmas tags are available on the tables in the fellowship space. I invite you to take one and um, bring your wrapped gift back to worship next Sunday as we want to get these gifts to the principal by the 20th or the 21st. The Glow Show is a podcast that's produced out of Grace Lutheran Church in downtown Phoenix by my former supervisor, Sarah Stadler. I was featured in an episode this week on the topic of forgiveness, and that episode will be shared to our Facebook page if you are inclined to listen. We are seeking one person to serve on the Congregational Council. Uh, in this upcoming 2022 and 2023 years. If this is a way you feel called to serve in this place, please connect with me or any council member. Are there any announcements for the good of the community? Yes, yes Sharon. No. I don't need a okay, mic. I'll just repeat. Um, I would like to invite you to take one or more ornaments and bring them back wrapped. These families are in need. Um, I think it's pathetic when one family requests 
twin sheet sets mm. for kids. Um, something we take for granted. Uh, the note from the principal at the school said, kids will love anything. <laughs> will appreciate anything. <laughs> so that tells you there is a real need. Uh, the green are from the family. It's a family with the two ch small children, a mother and a father. And the red ones are from a mother with a teenage boy who's 13. So lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. We have lots of opportunity to uh, be Jesus' hands and feet in this world, I think. Please stand as you are able for the final blessing. God to enfold us, God to surround us, God in our speaking, God in our thinking, God in our watching, God in our hoping. May we know the presence of God in all things. Amen. Amen. We sing together.